maybe more questions than answers for Gareth Southgate after last night's showing in their 2 0 win over Malta at Wembley. It wasn't great, was it? Uh, is he any closer to knowing his starting 11 for Euro 2024? What should his team be for that opening game at next summer's finals? That was the homework that we uh, set our panel before the show today. I've marked your work. Uh, you've all failed. Uh, no, actually, were you copying? Because there were a lot of similarities, actually. Uh, this is the team six of the 11 you all agreed on. Uh, Pickford and goal. I don't, you've all I don't gone think it's him. hard to disagree on that, though, is it? No, <laughs> it's true. Not much debate over Pickford and goal, it seems, at the moment. Stones makes all of your defences. Uh, you all agreed on Rice and Bellingham. Saka makes all of your teams. And along with no surprise, Harry Kane, the captain, leading the way. So there are five question marks we're going to try and fill in right now. We've gone for a 4 3 3 which tends to be the way Southgate plays, with a bit of tinkering and three at the back at, at times, of course. So let's start with right back, shall we? Uh, all but one of you have gone Kyle Walker. Gary, you have got Walker in your side at centre-back. We'll discuss that in a bit. But you've gone Rhys James. Now, he wasn't fit enough for this squad. He's played five minutes in the last 13 England internationals. Why does he make your team? So I'm thinking about the tournament. I'm thinking about limited games. I'm thinking about who you're going to play in the final or semi-final to, to go and win the thing, you know. So I think it, there's certain points of the tournament where you want certain things. And, and um, I probably would have had Walker at right back, but because I put him at centre-back, I'm thinking of, in my head, I was thinking about Mbappe in the final, Jules, in that little inside channel. And I was a little bit concerned that Harry Maguire might not have quite enough pace to deal with it, so, or, or Stones. So, so, yeah, there was a little bit of a gamble in my team. And... Um, Sink or swim management, isn't it, unfortunately? You know, so, so I've gone big. I've gone big with my choice. As his armbands on the floor. Yeah, I'm, trying yeah. like, I'm trying to look like these 34-year-olds. That's what I'm trying to do. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm sold on it. I mean, I saw, I saw what he picked today, Gary, when we, when we it, come in. I liked it. I really did like yeah, it. I liked it for the Gareth reason that if you're going to go it. high up the field, you're going to put yeah. pressure on to get the ball back. You cannot have... Someone like Maguire, who was in my team, by the way, because he's never let England down, defending 20 yards behind everyone else. If you want to defend the halfway line, it pushes your midfield closer and your forwards closer to go and win the ball high up the field. I think we're all in agreement. We are going to go gun hole here, aren't yeah. we? We're not playing... T there's not two sitting midfield players in our squads. We've got Declan Rice and we've got two eights either side of them. So we're going for it. It's easy sitting here, Gareth. We understand that. Um, <laughs> but this is the way we're going to try and win it. And I honestly believe it's his last chance. It's his last chance to go and win something. We had the best squad in Europe, bar none. There's not, a, there's not a squad better than us. I would argue that we're better than France and we're better than Portugal. They're the only other two teams. England are favourites with the bookies. Yeah, they, they've got the best squad of players. Everyone wants this squad of players, I guarantee that. It's just hopefully the manager can get the formation, get the rubber to green. England, England are favourites, Tim, aren't they? Because of the attacking players they've got. Yeah. That's why they're favourites. So why would they play a shape that isn't conducive to the best players in your squad getting on the ball and creating we're, chances? We're, we're also favourites in this country because the betting's in this country as well. <laughs> I think France, France might be point. the favourites in France. That's a very good yeah. point. Um, <clears> but, but England are generally yeah, favourites. When, when, when they're up there it, with France, aren't the, they? The only issue that we've really all got is defensively. Yeah. Yeah. That's our problem. The centre-half question is still there and the left-back issue. Right-back, we've got four of them. Toss a coin, doesn't really... There's not too much to choose between. There's, there's four very, very good right-backs that you could choose from. Left-back is an issue, major issue. And the centre-half alongside Stones could be an issue. Yeah. They're, they're the two positions where I think we are weakest. And if, you've got a, if you're not strong at centre-half, you don't win a tournament. Mm. That's your problem. Your major issue with left-back, you flagged there. Let's come to that. Uh, I mean, obviously, Luke Shaw, so often a regular for England, hasn't played for Manchester United since August, which may be why three of the five of you have gone with Kieran Trippier to start at left-back, as he was for the second half yesterday. Uh, you know, he plays right-back for Newcastle. That's his yeah. position, Tim. Do you not want a left-footer at left-back for a major tournament? Well, ideally, I think... Uh... I think the game comes simple to Luke Shaw, I really do, but he's had a lot of time off. I'm not sure if he's going to be fit, um, but I think he's got every attribute to be a top-class left-back. Um, gives you the balance on that side. I just think that we've got so many attacking options. I want the full-backs to pretty much stay at home and just hover in behind, and I think he gives them a set-piece delivery as well. Kieran, if he's in there, you know, you see how many goals he makes for Newcastle from corners and free kicks. <laughs> I haven't got Madison in my team. Uh, I think he's good at that as well. I haven't got Ward Prowse, so I put Trippier in there at left back because he's a good, he's a good egg to have around the uh, the dressing room as well. With a lot of experience, he's a calming influence. Um, and I just want him to stay at home and just hover behind and let the attacking players go and win the game. I'm yeah. shocked about something, Jules, because I haven't seen everyone's team, that Foden's not in every 
all five of our... Well, well let's wait until attackers for a bit later. We're doing <laughs> defenders. Defenders, yeah, we don't want defenders. No, no, no. We're, we're trying to pick yeah, our team. You've got but... left back. <laughs> <laughs> but, but, that, but that's the point, Jules. To win a tournament, you have to be very, very strong defensively. You need a very, very good back four. It's like to win a Premier League. Your defence has to be absolutely superb. You know, the best one or two in the country. So this isn't about attacking fullbacks. This isn't about fullbacks scoring goals, creating chances. There's enough players in the rest of the team to do that. Yeah. You've got to be solid defensively. If that, if that back four, back five, keeps a clean sheet, there's enough attacking talent to nick one, two goals at the other end. So that's what you've got to think about. This is tournament football is completely different yeah. to a 38-game season. Uh, just, just finally, on the left-back then, um, Jamie, you've gone with, with Trippier. If Luke Shaw plays the last four months of the season for Manchester United, do you really think Trippier will start ahead of him? No, I think potentially Shaw might do that then. But I think at the moment it was too many ifs and buts of him. I think Man United are in a strange place. I think he'd be coming into a side that might not be in a great place. You don't know how he's going to come back from injury. So if he does... And, he, and he's playing well. I think, like Tim said, you want the balance of a natural left-back player there. So I, I wouldn't surprise me at all if he, if he plays, if he's fit. Right, before we can move on to midfield, we've got to come up with a final back four. So we've got Pickford in goal, we're all agreed on that. We're all agreed on, are we Walker at right-back? Yeah, yes. it's got to be. Stones and, what were we saying, Maguire? That was for the majority? Yeah. Sorry, Gary, you're overruled there. Left-back, what were we saying? Got to decide, Trippier or Shaw? Trippier. Trippier for me. As it stands, Trippier, yeah. yeah. Uh, OK, I've got the deciding vote because it's split. Uh, Luke Shaw. Uh, so, that's <laughs> well, the back four split, for, for split England. 5 to nil. Is that a split? <laughs> <laughs> it's 3-2, but I'm levelling it up at 3 all, and then it goes with me, doesn't it? So, yeah, yeah Luke Shaw. <laughs> uh, so, that, that's Walker, Stones, Maguire and uh, Luke Shaw is our back four for that opening game for England at the Euro. So, that's the back five, if you like, with the keeper sorted. It's midfield we move now. You can see Rice and Bellingham are our absolute shoe-ins. We've got a couple of votes for Foden. We've got a couple of votes for Madison, who, of course, can both play further forward. Only one of you has gone with Southgate's pick from last night, Trent Alexander-Arnold. That was Courtney. Courtney, yeah. having seen him play there last night, are you now even more convinced that he's the answer? Yeah, I just think, look, we don't need two holding midfielders. There's, there's no way we need that. And, you know, the, maybe the discussions that we've just had maybe actually, paradoxically, make us think that because we're not as solid as we would like to be at the back. So two sitting midfielders potentially solve that problem. But for me, I want to be attacking the way that obviously Trent then plays for Liverpool in that role where he starts at right back and sort of peels in anyway. He's got a wonderful range of passing. He's fantastic on the ball. I think defensively for me, when he plays at right back, he wants to get forward too much. So I think he doesn't give us that balance in the, in the full-back position. So yeah, I'd like to see him. I say there'll, there'll be Rice as the one that's sitting, Trent and uh, Bellingham in there. And then, like I say, he can get forward. He's obviously got the set piece. Um, um, the obviously he's so good at. But you can oh. see that he loves controlling the game. He, he comes back in that role. He can dictate. And then he's got that defensive mind as well. If you do need him to drop in at any point, where you know he can break up the play. So for me, I, I was at Luton not so long back, and, and I just he, he's lovely to watch, isn't he? Yeah. Like it's one thing though, Gareth Southgate playing him last night against Malta with qualification already assured, but he's only started him in five competitive games in 37 before last night. Trent Alexander-Arnold. Can we really see in a major tournament? Tim, him putting Trent Alexander-Arnold in that position? No, but are we picking our team or are we picking Gareth's mind? No, you can go your team. I mean, because, yeah. yeah, I would... I would, would I'm have happy, Courtney, to have him in team, there. Team. I, had, I had Phil Foden in there. I think he has to be in the team somewhere. I had him in there. But I'm happy to have Trent in there. Completely different players. I mean, Phil will drive through the lines, you know, dribble through and, and, and break the lines. And I just think that Trent will just find a pass. I mean, his range of passing is unbelievable. If you're Harry Kane, when Trent gets hold of the ball... You're moving, you, and he'll find you. And he gives us a set piece option. I really like him in there. I really do. But you're quite right. I mean, he's only played one game in there for England. So the thing is, you're, so you're going to throw him in there at a tournament in the he deep has, end. I, for me, I'd play Madison there in that position. Yeah. 100. So Trent, I think he wouldn't been, make my squad. Would he? Not well, the whole, you, the whole got, squad. Yeah. Well, you've got you've got Trippier, Walker, Reece James. Squad or the eleven? Yeah. Oh, you've got going. Trippier, Walker, Reese James. You've got three right backs that can play different. Trippier can play different mm. positions. Kyle Walker can play centre half. And all of a sudden, it's like, so who do you play in midfield? You've got, you've got Madison in there. You've got Cole Palmer coming into that position. Bellingham, Gallagher, Henderson. When does Trent play in that midfield for no, me? No, you I'd, can't be I'd playing play Madison. You can't would you, would, you, would you take Jordan Henderson over Trent? No, nah, Trent Alexander yes, has to be on the plane. 
just, he, has, just, he has to go. Just like Aaron, not, how just we, like Aaron, Aaron, just like Aaron Ramsey has just gone with Wales as the caps. He's not playing. He's gone for experience. 23 players in a tournament. There are eight players that will not play. They have to be comfortable with that. You have to understand that. Yeah, but is that not why Henderson left Liverpool and what Klopp said? He wasn't but comfortable wasn't, with not Henderson playing. Henderson wasn't supposed to play in the World Cup as our best player or one of our best players. But is Trent... Is, is, would you have Reece James ahead of Trent then when he's been injured? He's what not was really a remit? Team form, or squad? <laughs> well, no, but I'm just saying... <laughs> you just opened this whole thing No, but it wouldn't make my... It wouldn't make, doesn't make my team, doesn't make my squad, Trent. <laughs> because I think there's better players in those positions. And Matt, nah, Madison gets uh, the vote in midfield okay, for well, me. Somehow I've got to push you on, a, on a, <laughs> a decision here for the third midfielder. I don't know how to do this. And Are we going... Not being convinced on Trent, then. We're, we're all convinced Phil, oh, Phil yeah. Foden's in Foden. the team, aren't we? Well, he's, uh, he's on the left of the, of the attacking three. Well, that's the free, debate, isn't it? Some of you put him in field, some of you put him in the front. I would have so. Madison in that position. I'd have Madison. Can we agree on left. Madison? Just for the sake of moving on, because we've got stuff to do. Um, yeah? Well, I'm no. happy with... He's, played, he's been brilliant Foden. this season. He's okay. been outstanding. Yeah. We've got Madison. OK, so <laughs> that's the midfield three. We've got Rice... We've got Bellingham. They'd all agreed on that before today. And uh, I think we just about agreed that Madison is, is in that three. So, one more question mark to fill in. We know Kane's in. We know Saka's in. All five agree. Or I'm getting some disgruntlement from my left here. Uh, Tim, in which case, I'll come to you for the first one. Um, Marcus Rashford is in Gary's team. He's not in your team. Um, one goal in 16 for Manchester United. What chance do you have of putting him in the team next summer? Uh, no. Uh, not, not a chance. Well, if he has a brilliant he, six months to finish the no, season. No, he can thank his manager for, for uh, playing, him, playing his way out of the England team, unfortunately. I think if he was at Man City now, I think he's got all the attributes to, to be a world-class player and make the England team. Um, I think uh, there's not going to be a turnaround between now and the end of the season, unfortunately. And I think you can thank Ten Hag for that because it's, it's not been good enough. Um, for me, Jack Grealish has to be there. I've worked with Jack. I know what he's like. But for, for Phil Foden not to be in this starting lineup, he's a... It's criminal. Both of these players have to be in, in the team. We have to build teams around players with ability like this. Um, and unfortunately, because I've been bullied out of that midfield area... <laughs> <laughs> I've just seen Madison wasn't in your team at all, was he? And I've managed to... No, he wasn't, but you can't argue how well he's done. You know, he's done absolutely brilliantly. But I've worked with this boy. I know how good he is. Yeah. You know, he's incredible. And, and I think in an English shirt... And the big occasion, he'd stick his chest out, and he'd be he'd be the absolute top man. And uh... he can't be he can't be ahead of Foden, surely. Well, he can because I, I'm with Tim. I, I'm I'm back in Tim on this, but I, I put Grealish in. Mm. What ahead of Foden? Yeah, you, Phil Foden for me has to start out of pretty much. I'm saying Bellingham and F Foden has to start. Well, which of those two are getting more game time this season at Manchester City with Doku on the scene now? Oh yeah. It depends. Maybe that maybe that be a deciding factor between between that and them. But if it was a question of Foden not playing, I'd pref I'd almost but be I play it, Foden it, at, and Grealish so and, and maybe not play Madison. So Fo Phil Foden has to play. What if, in what if the question is Foden or Madison? In that position, no, I'd as go, an eight. As an eight, I'd go Foden. Foden. Yeah. yeah. I'd go Foden, but I, like I said, I would have gone. Well, you just put him way. in, though, Madison. You put Madison in as an eight. You're, you're talking about an outside. Yeah, because I was having Foden <laughs> outside left. No, so I was having Madison. That's why you're not a manager. <laughs> <laughs> or you. No, I'm asking you the question. Watching this and yeah. Yeah. enjoying it. What do you mean? No, I'm asking you the question. If it was a number eight position, it was between Madison and Foden, and Grealish is out on the left, you just wouldn't have Grealish in at all. Uh, no, I'd play. It, I would play Foden to play him, but he's got to play it. I don't. He's got to play. You've got to find a place for him in the team for me. And not he's, Madison then. But Foden yeah, plays. In that, Foden in that plays situation, off the right. if it was out of Madison and, and Foden, Foden plays off the right for City when yeah. he plays high and right. So that's Saka's position. He's not going to play there. No, but he has to play on the side. Danny. He's, he's, yeah. he, him and Bellingham for me are the best players in the England squad. Yeah, for I agree. Me. He, 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 you have to find a way. He's a world world class talent. Right, got we've got to try and come up with a decision here, haven't we, um, on, on who we get. We've already got Madison in the midfield three. We've got to get a final player yeah. up there with Surely, surely you've got to go with experience, and we both said Grealish. I think, yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> Forget these young managers, you they know what you're talking about. <laughs> I mean, what a lovely problem to have if you're... We're phasing you out, mate. Yeah. <laughs> well, and you that's know? it. Have we, has, has, has an England manager ever had this many attacking no. options going to I, well, Yeah, I think he has. I think that golden generation who didn't win anything, I think they were unbelievable on paper. Um, this many options, though? Yeah, I, I think. Oh, many options? Not sure. No, Not nev sure. Ne never really had a left-sided player and never had two centre-forwards yeah. at, at the same time. That was the problem. Yeah. OK. They're I mean, all, he can't go to sleep. He can't go to sleep at night. His wife's saying, why can't he go to sleep? He said, I'm worried about playing Grealish, Foden, <laughs> Madison. She's like, oh, if that's your problem, so well, you've got to Well, listen, it. Tim gave me evils when I picked Madison in the midfield, so I'm going to go with him and Danny and give Grealish that last yes. place on the, on the left. Jacko. Which, which, which means this is the 11 we've gone with. 
Um, and uh, obviously you've got Kane leading the it's attack, you've got Saka yes. on the right, Never which they'd already agreed worse. with. Yeah. You've got Grealish on the left. I'm sorry Phil Foden doesn't make it. If we had our time again, it'd probably look a little bit different. But that just demonstrates the point that uh, Southgate has options. And this is the 11 that's going to win the Euros, eh, Courtney? It's coming home. OK. No, I think it's great that, as well, the, the depth that we've got for people to come and impact the game. That's the most important thing. Yeah. Yeah. Jamie's still not happy with me. But we've got to move <laughs> on.